Good evening, everybody. We'll start with today's session. We have started discussing about the homeopathic management of the indisposition. And in 150 aporism, Hanuman have explained how to manage the indisposition of a mild variety. He explained over there, there is no need to find it out a remedy or medicine for the patient. Just certain alterations in the diet and regimen are sufficient to clear those patients. But he has explained at the same time, right, in the aporism number 151, that if this indisposition is of a violent character, it always requires a medicine. Because patient may land into the complications or patient may land into some problems if you don't treat those indispositions of a violent character and you have to find it out a remedy. In such types of cases, he explained over there, the most peculiar particular symptoms or striking symptoms are necessary in order to build the totality. Totality is very clear because everything is of a recent origin and because of which the things becomes very clear they are crystal clear to find it out a right medicine. Out of those symptoms, the symptoms which are more characteristic, having individualizing value, are essential to find it out a remedy. The weak symptoms like loss of appetite or um, general body ache or fever, those are not of at all importance to find it out a remedy. So ultimately, when you deal with such types of violent indispositions, whatever is needed is the totality of the characteristic symptoms which guides you to find it out a right medicine. So that's what we have discussed up to the aphorism number 153 along with the footnote mentioned over there. That also we have finished that Dr. Bonim Hussain was the first person who has introduced this importance of characteristic symptoms. At the same time, we have discussed that he is the first person who has added uh, one more point in the definition of complete symptom, that is the concomitants. So this is what we have discussed. Let us start with the 154 aphorism, what he wants to explain over there. If the antitype constructed from the list of symptoms of the most suitable medicine contain those peculiar, uncommon, singular, and distinguishing characteristic symptoms, which are to be met with the disease to be cured in the greatest number, and in the greatest similarity, this medicine is the most appropriate homeopathic specific remedy for this morbid state. The disease, if it be not one of very long standing, will generally be removed and extinguished by the first dose of it without any considerable disturbance. So what he is explaining? He is explaining how to manage such types of cases. So. Most important thing is that you have to find it out the totality of the symptoms and you have to match that totality with the antitype totality from the list of medicines. If you get a very perfect similimum, that similimum is the specific remedy of that case at that specific time. Otherwise, there are no specifics in omega. Only that remedy which you have found on the basis of law of similars and at that specific time, based upon that specific totality, is the specific remedy of that case. And if it matches at all level, including the potency, including the uh, repetition, all things if you have taken into consideration, what he says is very important. The disease will yield and or removed and extinguished by the first dose of it. See, Hanuman says very clearly, in acutes, it never requires too much repetition. People comes out with their thoughts. People say that it's acute and it acute requires too much repetition. It's not so. Acutes, it requires very less repetition because susceptibility is high. Your potency should be high, but less repetition. Because the first dose is sufficient to stimulate that patient. Already the susceptibility is very high. Your medicinal stimulus is sufficient to arouse the medicinal disease in the patient and to extinguish the natural disease of the patient. So it never requires too much repetition and that's what he has explained. Will generally be removed and extinguished by the first dose of it 
without any considerable disturbance. That is more important. When acute disease you are treating, it never causes any type of discomfort to the patient. Even patient doesn't know when the disease has recovered. He doesn't know the when fever has disappeared. He doesn't know the when headache has stopped. He doesn't know the when the pains are stopped. If it is of an acute origin. Acute origin complaints generally disappear imperceptibly. Patient never knows when it has disappeared. And it yields to a to a first dose or first two, three dose, it never requires too much repetition. So, right over there on that aphorism, in acute disorders, the homeopathic remedy, homeopathic re remedy requires very less repetition. Very less repetition. So generally, if you in your OPD, if the patients are there, for example, nowadays there are many patients of headache, many patients of body ache, many patients of fever are there, cough patients are there. If you are giving any specific medicine on the basis of totality, give two or three doses. Don't repeat too much. Because already they are diseased because their susceptibility was high. Because of which they are they are suffering. They are suffering from sore throat because their susceptibility is high. They are suffering from acute viral fever because their susceptibility is high. So it, it itself indicates that their susceptibility is high. So what they require is just a stimulus of a right medicine. So keep it in your mind. It should not be repeated too much in acute disorders. Okay? Is it clear with everyone? And this is truth. Whatever Hanuman has said is very correct because he has understood exactly the concept of susceptibility and he has understood exactly how the acute disease develops. So this is one thing which he has mentioned regarding it. Let us go with the next aphorism. Aphorism number 155. I say without any considerable disturbance. That is the last sentence of the last aphorism. Why he said without any considerable disturbance? Reason he mentions over there. For in the employment of this most appropriate homeopathic remedy, it is only the symptom, symptoms of the medicine that correspond to the symptoms of the disease that are called into play. The former occupying the place of latter that is weaker in the organism. That is in the sensation of the life principle and thereby annihilating them by overpowering them. But the other symptoms of homeopathic medicine, which are often very numerous, being in no way applicable to the case of disease in question, are not called into play at all. Very important thing. This was a question when I was learning. I have asked it to many, many teachers. There, but I could not get satisfactory answer to this question. My question was very simple. That if we have a belladonna in our Madhra Medica, consider that belladonna have 100 symptoms. Patient comes to you with a 10 symptoms. So, and you give the belladonna to the patient because all 10 are matching to the this patient. My question to everyone was that, that if you give belladonna, why remaining 90 symptoms never appears in that patient when you give the dose? Because your dose is stronger than the natural disease. So I was not getting the answer of this many days when I was learning. Ultimately, I studied the homeopathy in a proper way and I got the answer. What is your answer regarding this? What do you feel? Why the rest of the symptoms of belladonna are not getting proved? Any idea? Sir, maybe because patient is not in a healthy state. He is not in a healthy state, but he is in a susceptible state. So he, he should prove the rest of the remedy. Why he is not proving? The answer is 
whatever the symptoms, 100 symptoms are there in the remedy, they are not proved by single prover. It is the collection of the symptoms from different provers. There are many provers who have shown those symptoms. It is the collection from all the provers and analyzed and then the Matra Medica is formed. So this collection of the symptoms is not from one single prover because the susceptibility of that individual is, uh, is matters over here. This patient comes to you only with those 10 symptoms because his susceptibility is that much that he can produce the 10 symptoms. If he is more susceptible, he would have proved two, three more symptoms. It depends upon the susceptibility of human being. It depends upon the constitution of that human being. It depends upon the myosome of that human being. And that's why he is able to produce only 10 symptoms. And he will react to those 10 symptoms only because his body adapts to that only, not for the rest of the symptoms. Even though you give the stronger dose. So when you give stronger medicine, it annihilates the weaker one permanently. Because look, nature's law of cure works. What is the nature's law of cure? A weaker dynamic affection is permanently extinguished in the living organism by a stronger one. If latter, whilst differing in kind, is very similar to former in its manifestation. So here you are finding it out similarity at the level of manifestations. Only the kind is different. One is natural disease, another is artificial disease. Artificial disease is stronger than natural disease. That's why it annihilates permanently the natural disease. And this is what Hanuman is explaining over there, that when you give this similimum, which removes the natural disease permanently and what remains is only the artificial disease. What he says further, but the other symptoms of homeopathic medicine, which are often very numerous, being in no way applicable to the case of the disease in question, are not called into play at all. The patient, growing hourly better, feels almost nothing of them at all. Because the excessively minute dose requisite for the homeopathic use is much too weak to produce the other symptoms of the medicine that are not homeopathic to the case. In those parts of the body that are free from the disease and consequently can allow only homeopathic symptoms to act on the parts of the organism that are already most irritated and excited by the similar symptoms of the disease in order that the sick life principle may react only to a similar but stronger medicinal disease whereby the original malady is extinguished. So this is what he is explaining. He has given the probable answer to this question. He says over there that this person is susceptible only to those 10 symptoms. So when you match the remedy, only those similar symptoms gets annihilated. Rest of the symptoms never appears because patient is not susceptible to all other symptoms. And that's why he reacts only to those. Second important thing, his original disease gets vanished only because, because the artificial disease is stronger. Why it is stronger? Already we have discussed in aphorism number 30-31. Why uh, artificial diseases are more stronger than natural diseases? Because, because they act without condition. There is no condition which is required. They act unconditionally. Natural disease always requires condition to develop itself. So naturally, natural disease is weaker than the artificial disease. So these persons who are susceptible to those that specific medicine will react immediately to the first dose of the medicine and the natural disease disappears. And when you stop giving the medicine, the original, the artificial symptoms which are produced because of the medicine, those also start disappearing and patient be becomes well in a gradual manner without leaving any trace of the symptoms, without producing any discomfort over there. So this, this is very important one has to understand. And then in one more aphorism, he explains probable explanation, how it works. 
is 156. Today we'll finish this 156 and we'll stop because next four aphorisms are related with the homeopathic aggravation. 156, what is this? There is, however, almost no homeopathic medicine, be it ever so suitably chosen, that especially if it should be given in an insufficiently minute dose, will not produce in a very irritable sensitive patients. At least one trifling unusual disturbance, some slight new symptoms whilst its action lasts. For it is next to impossible that medicine and disease should cover one another symptom, one another symptomatically as exactly as two triangles with equal sides and equal angles. But these ordin ordinary circumstances, but this in ordinary circumstances, unimportant difference will be easily done away by with the potential activity energy of the living organism and is not perceptible by the patients, not excessively delicate. The restoration goes forward, notwithstanding to the goal of perfect recovery, if it be not prevented by the action of heterogeneous medicinal influences upon the patient, by the errors of regimen or by excitement of the patients. See, he explains one more important thing over here. Very important, in fact. He explains that when you get a patient who is expressing his symptoms, you cannot get exact similarity. 100% similarity is not there between the patient's complaints and your remedy. There are minute differences. But he explains at the same time, the potential energy is sufficient to remove those effects because it is those are vague in manner. What requires is the characteristic totality which should match. And if it match, then there is no need to take care about all those minute differences. Those are taken away with the help of same medicine. Then recovery ensues. But what type of recovery? It is a permanent recovery comes. That recovery and it, there is no Unless and until there is no certain hereditary medicines or what he say, heterogeneous medicines are used. Heterogeneous means if patient is, if you are giving a right homeopathic similimum to the patient and your patient tells to doctor it is not working and then you find it out that he, he is using that wix over his face, over his nose or he is using tiger balm, he is using amrudanjan. So it will it will not going to work because it is a heterogeneous medicine which is not giving a chance to your perfect homeopathic minimum which is given in minute doses and it will not going to work. If the person is consuming coffee and you are giving the medicine, it will not going to work. It is it will it will not because it it against removes the action of medicine. There are many patients who never gets recovered because of acute allergic rhinitis and they comes and sits in front of you and tells that doctor it is not working and you get a typical scent over there and you ask them what whether you have you, you are you using any scent are you using any duo and then explain yes doctor yes very good tell them that it will not going to work because because those things removes the effects of medicines those medicines those <coughs> ingredients affect the actions of medicines. So if the person is consuming tobacco, your remedy will not work. If the person is taking or doing smoking, your remedy will not work. If person is taking strong allopathic medicines, it will not going to work. And there are many, many um, people who have habit of applying that wicks to the nose and then only they get the sleep. There are such types of persons without that they never sleep. Those patients never get the result with homeopathy because that action is prevented of those things. So this is last sentence is very important. If it be not prevented by the action of heterogeneous medicinal influences upon the patients, the errors of regimen. Errors of regimen means if the daily routine of the person is disturbed. Patient comes to you with severe acid peptic disease and he sleeps at 3 o'clock in the morning. He wakes up at 11 o'clock in, in the morning. 
you give very perfect remedy and still it is not working because his regimen is wrong. You have to tell that this is, this is, if you will follow this, it will not going to work. Diet and daily regimen plays very vital role in the action of medicines. If the patient is consuming something in the diet which is of a strong medicinal nature, your medicine will not going to work. So this last point, which is very important, that heterogeneous medicinal influence upon the patient and by errors of regimen or by excitement of the passions. Last passion. What is passion? Anyone? Passion means excitement. It is a... Passions means strong emotions. Strong excitement. So, excitement of passions. Suddenly, person goes, oh, this, this, the such types of persons who are too sensitive, too reactive, who gets offended very easily, who gets affected very easily, who reacts very strongly. Such types of persons, you have to calm them. You have to tell them that when you are taking the medicine, it, it should work. You have to control your passions. And these are very, very important things which are necessary when patient comes to you. You have to discuss with them. So any patient who is consuming such types of things, it is your duty to ask them to stop. So if the patient who is eating tobacco, or there are many patients, village patients, who have the habit of using the misery, it is your duty to ask them to stop. And you, you strongly said that. It is very important that you should not stop the misery. It is not, no, it will not going to work. You tell them that if you want to stop the misery, then come to me. Otherwise, don't come. This is very important. Otherwise, I will not going to give you medicine. Next time, tell them this, this strongly with lot of confidence. Then patient follows. Otherwise, they never follow. You should be one important thing I will going to disclose to all of you is that uh, your vital force should be so stronger than the patient when you deal with the patient. This is too important. Otherwise, it will not go into work. So, this, 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 then again, the nature's law works. So, this is very important. You should not be pulsatila. You should not be just yes. Oh, yes. You should not. Otherwise, it will not go into work. You should be very confident regarding telling the things to the patient. And they should follow it 100%. This is my suggestion to all of you. You should be very, very, very confident regarding telling the patients regarding all those norms and all those things which they should avoid in their diet. So we have finished today in three aphorisms. Aphorism number 154, 154, 155, and 156, where he has explained how you can find it out, a right medicine, and how much to repeat, and all those things he has mentioned over there. So this is what we have discussed. Tomorrow we will continue with the aphorism number 157, 158, all those related with homeopathic aggravation. Uh, today it's a International Women's Day. So, best wishes to all women who have joined today over here from the Sai Somi Homeopathy Clinic. And on the occasion of this day, tomorrow's Thursday session will be for the homeopathic management of women's diseases. I will going to share cases during my internship period, during my early hospital time which are very interesting where when I was using the Kent's repertory as a big tool for me. At that time, I used to use Kent's Matra Medica, Kent's repertory, Kent's Matra Medica, Boric's Matra Medica and Allen's keynote. That's where those were the tools available. So I'll share all those things tomorrow in at 9 o'clock. Be there and ask it. So it will be open session again to all of you. So don't miss that session. You're going to get definitely a new rubrics, new things which you're going to learn in tomorrow's session. So thank you being there. We'll meet again tomorrow. Are there any questions, queries? We can have a chat. Otherwise, we'll stop.
हेलो सर यस सर इफ यू वांट टू प्रिस्क्राइब बाय कॉम्बिनेशन नंबर 26 टू पेशेंट फॉर डीजेनरेटिव चेंजेस और समथिंग लाइक ऑस्टियोफाइट्स एंड एट द सेम टाइम पेशेंट इज हैविंग रिनल स्टोन्स देन व्हाट टू डू सर इट डजंट मेक एनी डिफरेंस यू आर नॉट गिविंग इन मटेरियल फॉर्म you are not giving 26 number in material it is not a material it is 3x 6x potencies are there it will not create any stone you can give safely without causing any trouble to the patient there is no okay court. sir answer one more question hmm? uh, nowadays when uh, children are playing in garden there are lots of mosquitoes and is it okay to apply odomos sir <laughs> uh there is no other still i don't know any mosquito repellent in homeopathy <laughs> so uh, till that period it is the only safest method you can and after coming home wash them clean them that is more important that's all then and if kids are taking homeopathic treatment then also we can apply you can apply you can repeat the medicine if you feel that action is vanished if you feel that action is disturbed then it there is need to repeat otherwise there is no need to repeat okay thank you sir okay sir ha huh? sir mere ek patient hai he is silesia उसके नेप ऑफ नेक में जो है वो जो है वो एक नोड सब था जो कि उससे काफी बेहतर हुआ और उसका जो नेक में पेन रहता था शदीद वो भी काफी बेहतर हुआ है लेकिन सर उनके जो लेफ्ट शोल्डर से एल्बो तक जो पेन है ना वो नहीं जा रहा और जो एक यूरिन का इशू है कि वो मतलब थोड़ा बहुत जो एक फील रहती है कि अब ब्लड में वो रह गया है वो भी एक चीज स्टिल अपनी जगह पे है वो सर सलेशिया में वो हो नहीं रहा सर सिर्फ उसके नेप ऑफ नेक का जो पेन था वो बहुत बेहतर हो गया उसके और वो जो लिपोमा टाइप चीज थी स्वेलिंग वो भी बहुत बेहतर हुई है you have to find it out exactly the symptoms what are the symptoms which are present depending on that you have to find it out a remedy you cannot fix remedy you just go with the features and find repertorize it unless and until you find the right remedy for that it will not disappear you have to find it out a remedy which covers that totality so that will definitely going to work right sir <clears throat> okay so sir, uh if sir one minute sir uh if uh, we are giving medicine uh, for one month and then in between the patient becomes uh, sick if for acute complaints any acute complaints then we have to consider again totality and give the another medicine which may be which should be complementary to the previous medicine it depends it, it should, every time you cannot get the complementary remedy but many a times you can second important thing judge whether patient really requires medicine okay if it is bearable ask the patient to bear but if it is not bearable then you find it out remedy on the acute totality an acute remedy remedy should not be defecting at that time it should be acutely acting remedy okay until that time we have to stop the previous medicine no you can continue it doesn't matter there it is whatever medicine you are giving is not the uh, material medicine so there is no question of mixing the actions of medicines okay okay thank you sir okay <coughs> so we'll meet tomorrow at 6 o'clock and again in the at 9 o'clock thanks a lot